Hi, welcome back to this session of Paint This with Jerry Arnell in Watercolor. Yes, folks, we are continuing with these wonderful studies and lessons on the basic concepts of watercolor. Now, these first few weeks are more about understanding the principles of watercolor. Now, in the future, yes, we will do more advanced things, but I don't want to do that to you right now because many of you are learning for the first time. You're just tapping into the fun, exciting things of watercolor. A lot of you have, have written and asked about watercolor, and it is sort of a frustrating medium because you don't have as much control. It's always called the unforgiving medium because once it's on there, you have very little room to make adjustments. So you've got to plan better. That's the thing I want to mention to all of you is that when you do watercolor, you have to do more planning. Generally speaking, you have to sketch a little more accurately with your subjects because remember, in a, the opaque mediums like oil and acrylic, uh, you can paint over something and blur an edge and, or misshape something and you can paint right back over it real quick. Here, you've got to be fairly precise. If you're doing a mountain, you got to stay in the shape of the line. So we're going to do that today. Today we're going to do a full-scale scene, a small full-scale scene of a mountain scene up in the, in the Grand Tetons, which is one of my favorite places in the whole wide world. And I think I'm just going to call this little painting Mountain High because I just love the mountains. And uh, so you're going to have fun seeing how we lay this out. By the way, before I do that, if you remember one of our last sessions, in fact, I think it was our last session, remember we did a, some small little things, and this was the last one. I had taped it down. This was one of the note card things I was going to show you. Well, I want to show you what happens after you tape it. This is how cool this is. Now, if you pull the tape off, you'll notice, see, it leaves a real nice clean edge, so it's almost like it frames it. So if you want to do some of these for families or friends, and you want to send them to them as an original hand-painted card. Look at this, how cool this is. Just peel your tape off carefully so that you don't tear the paper. And see there, it's all kind of trimmed nicely. And then when you open it up, whoop, I got it upside down. But then you just write your little verse in there, and there you have it. Isn't that cool? So now all you got to do is get you some of that 90-pound that, uh, um, watercolor paper, whatever size you want, and fold it in half, tape it, and there you have your little scene. I think that's really cool. So you can have a lot of fun with that. That's how versatile watercolor is. It's something you can do in a heartbeat just quick one day and just get it done. I just wanted to share that with you briefly. All right, let's go down here now to our, our layout. Now, as I mentioned, this mat, I'm, I'm hoping if they can pull back to see this mat a little bit, I always have a mat that I use for my subject to kind of cut and frame it in. Now this is a watercolor board. This is not watercolor paper. In fact, let me just go ahead and make sure everyone knows what I'm doing here. This is the board. It's a little bit of a, got a little bit of texture to it. And you can see it's just kind of a cardboard. I'm laying it down here. I don't have to tape this because it's fairly stiff. So yeah, I can tip it if I need to bleed the water or whatever. This is the size mat that I'm using. Now, this is just an old mat, but I keep a bunch of different sizes around the studio, and I lay it right on there. And by the way, when you cut your watercolor paper or your board, if you'll notice, I've cut it the same size as the paper, as the mat, because these have to be matted and framed, and it gives it more stability so that when, you, uh, when your framer frames it or if you frame it, you'll be able to hinge it properly. I know somebody said, what do you mean hinge it? Well, we'll talk about that in a future show. Then I leave a little space down here at the bottom for my dabble board so I can test colors and stuff. Obviously, you're going to need that. So what I do is I lay this on here, kind of square it up. Then I'm going to make some little, really light lines inside the mat perimeter. Now, you may not be able to see this sketch, folks, and, and it's, it's there. But there's some mountains there. There's a little cabin. There's an old dirt road. There's... Uh, uh, some hills in here, some trees, and a couple of rocks and things. Mostly it's about, how, again, how to use these watercolors to create different effects. Now that I've got my sketch, I'm going to keep this handy because once in a while you want to lay it on there. It helps you see things better if you have this mat close by. Now then, here's some of the reference material that we're going to be working from. These are some previous paintings that I've done in the past. So here's, uh, this is the Grand Tetons. And I've made a lot of trips up there myself, 
and I love this this place. Now this was a painting I did in acrylic and it's got this little Indian village. This has the lake in it. Here's another section of a close up here in the autumn with these mountains and these pine trees. So I'm going to use these two as my reference material. Frankly folks, I'd rather use my own reference material anytime I can or my own photography if I've got it. A lot of times I'll do small painting, acrylic, oil, or even watercolor and use those as studies. So we're going to use these sort of as my studies. All right, let's get started. Now remember that watercolor has to be done in layers from light to dark versus the opaque mediums from dark to light. So now we've got our sketch here. See this, you can, I'm hoping you can see it. You can't sketch heavy, so that's why I'm going to point this out to you here. Maybe you can see that there. I'm already getting paint on there. And I want to, I'm going to turn it upside down so that I will have a little more control over where my water is going to go around the edge of the mountain. I'm going to take one of my smaller hake brushes. These are the little goat hair brushes. You can get them in different sizes. Uh, this is like a two inch here, this, this particular one. This one's about uh, one inch. You can get them in all, all sizes. I'm going to use this one. <clears throat> now, the other thing I want to share with you guys is you can see it takes a lot more preparation to do this. I wanted to close it over here on my palette for a minute. I've taken my mister bottle. I've misted all of my paints, every one of these in the wells, so that they can be soaking and they get a little bit saturated so you can get the pigment up. So about 10 minutes before you start your painting, go through and be sure you wet those so that they can be, uh, you know, getting softened. Uh, let me just, I'm just trying to remember everything. This is so exciting to me. Uh, watercolor has glycerin in it. Glycerin is an agent to help keep the watercolor soft and so that when they dry out they don't crack. So that's why you can actually leave these watercolors out for days and days and days and days and they may feel hard but they don't crack and get crummy because they have a, an agent in them to keep them soft. All you just put a little water in there just like new again. So you don't waste watercolor like you do some other colors or paints. All right now what we're going to do is I'm going to just take some clean water. I've got my three water containers and I'm going to gently wet right up to the edge of the, of the sketch like this. Now I can paint over the, the uh, line where the, uh, you know, I drew the mat because, you know, that'll be hidden anyway. But right now I'm just taking plain water and I'm wetting up to where the mountain is. Now remember the paint's only going to go where there's water. It'll stop right on the edge of that